Who would have ever guessed we'd be where we are today? Six weeks ago, the Dow Jones was approaching $30,000, and multifamily and other real estate asset classes were almost impossible to acquire at any sensible price. Banks were giving out loans like they were candy, and most of us were fraternizing by the coffee machine or at Starbucks planning our summer vacations. But that seems almost like years ago now, right? So you can see why I hate to make predictions. Nevertheless, I'll try to give some thoughts on investing in commercial real estate and other real estate in this coming era. Number one, watch out for government intervention. In an era where, in an era where government's already involved in almost every aspect of our public and private lives, you can bet that they will be deeply involved here for the long run. Will landlords be penalized for charging full rent to unemployed tenants? How will tenants survive if they can't pay their rent? And how will property owners survive if they can't evict those who don't but still have to pay their mortgages? You can bet the federal, state, and local government will be involved on a scale like never before and for a long time. Now, if voters are 75 percent non-entrepreneurs, non-landlords, then you can bet an anti-landlord stance could play really well in the next election. And I think we know that that's going to be a major factor here. Now here's the lesson. Prepare to be flexible and plan to follow the golden rule. Hey, you may actually be the beneficiary in this mess if you take if you take a gentle, kind stance while your competitors take a different tact. Number two, watch out for media shaming. Now you can bet the media will be right there alongside the government looking for stories depicting landlords and other entrepreneurs and business owners of all types of the, in the worst light possible. This plays well the typical portrayal of, of entrepreneurs as villains don't think you're exempt, Mr. or Mrs. Duplex owner, either. You could wind up on the front page of the newspaper just like a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Let's be honest. Many business owners deserve to be shamed. I just watched the Dark Waters film with Mark Ruffalo, and it was the story of DuPont's poisoning of Parkersburg, West Virginia. Honestly, I cried. I admit it. My wife grew up near there and she has suffered for years with many of the health impacts that they cause. Don't be one of these entrepreneurs. Here's the lesson. Be thick-skinned, but don't be a schmuck. You're called to love others before you're called to make a big profit. And I'm firmly convinced you can do both, though it's sometimes tough to navigate. Who knows? Maybe you'll even get written up for doing something beautiful in the media. Number three, watch for opportunities. Many high quality real estate assets will become available as the pressure from this unanticipated and unprecedented meltdown squeezes the lifeblood out of business owners and commercial real estate owners of all stripes and types. Marriott's CEO in an emotional video to employees said the impact of this crisis is worse than the meltdown in 2008 and 9-11 combined. And they lived through the depression. And what about the restaurants, retails, malls, offices? Companies worldwide are learning how to run remotely. And even if they don't lay off any staff in this meltdown, perhaps they're going to learn how to run remotely and they may not return to office space as usual after the crash. Now, your choice of the right asset types is critical and the right timing as well. Those on a downward trend like malls may be less prefer preferable than, say, recession-proof assets like mobile home parks and self-storage. Who knows? We can't even guess what other asset types will emerge in this crisis. Think about data centers. Now, here's the lesson. If you have access to cash, keep your eyes open. Use this time to read, train, listen to podcasts, plan, make friends with bankers and real estate pros. Social distancing is not physical distancing. It is physical distancing, I mean, but it's not personal distancing. Assemble your team and plan to acquire that commercial property or residential property at the lowest possible price in modern history when this thing blows up a little further. Number four, watch 
for new investors. Now, this may be obvious to you, but have you ever realized why the stock market drops? It's because people are pulling their cash out, duh. Many of them have it stuffed under their mattress and they're wondering what to do next. Plus, the U.S. government and Federal Reserve are pouring money into the system like there's no tomorrow. It's kind of an eerie thought. Much of this sideline cash will not be dumped back into the slot machines of Wall Street and will be looking for a new home. Commercial real estate and other real estate in a normal world where we will return one day provides unparalleled stability and predictability if acquired with conservative underwriting and modest debt. If you're planning investments like syndications that require a lot of investor cash, you may be able to acquire it from investors who never invested in real estate before. And this, along with building a team, in my earlier point, may create an unsurpassed wealth building opportunity for you and your investors. But you'll have to be patient. The good news is you're not going to lose 10% of your asset value while you go to lunch like you could in you know, oil or gold or the stock market. You'll have time to figure this out. Here's a lesson. Educate yourself in the advantages of commercial or residential real estate investing. Choose an asset class and learn it well. In addition to assemble your team, assemble your tribe and be prepared to tell your story. Become an authority in and create valuable content. Like a grizzly bear at a waterfall with its jaws open, with salmon jumping into it, be the authority that investors will seek out when this crisis abates. And until then, stay calm, love your neighbors, look for opportunities to slow down and connect with those you love in ways that maybe you missed during these many years of prosperity we all experienced. Many people report their most cherished memories and relationships took place in the midst of crises, like the Great Depression from 90 years ago. I'm certain it will be no different this time if we position ourselves well. <laughs> Did you hear about the little girl who said, Mommy, I, I like coronavirus because I get to spend more time with you. You may have opportunities like that. And you may also find it odd, but I'm going to say that this could turn out to be the best time of your life and a memorable time for you and your family. And if you position yourself right, you may eventually have an opportunity to build great wealth on the other side of this crisis. So be ready and look out for opportunities. And I'm looking forward to chatting with you further. I'm Paul Moore from Wellings Capital and Bigger Pockets. Have a great day and stay safe.